Hey, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Radical Geek YouTube. It is Sunday night, and we're here for Coffee Talk. I've got, we're going to be making an iced dirty chai and an Alfredo sauce. And now that I am speaking up, uh, Dyson also says good evening. So uh, let's see who's here today. I know that there are other live streams going on right now, so people will join a little bit later. But tonight we have Lisa, who was uh, here first, and uh, Jen has joined us, and Reichwin is here, and Exchange Student 2, and Blue Duff. Well, it's great to see everybody. I'm glad that you are uh, that you guys love Alfredo, because it's going to be super easy, and we'll go through it. And I have some nerd things about Alfredo, too, so that'll be awesome. Um, but let's start with the drink. Because, uh, well, because I'm thirsty and because I don't want my ice to melt. Uh, dirty chai is espresso mixed with a chai latte. That's all there is to it. So it's nothing too, too wild or crazy. The dirty part is the espresso. Now, I just brewed my espresso ahead of time so we didn't have to hear the machine. But also so, it, so that it could cool down. Because we're already going to have a heated element going over the ice. And that's one less thing that is going to uh, uh, dilute it. I Also, I do have my unsweetened almond milk. That is what I'm using for the base. You could certainly use any dairy you prefer. I do think that if you used all heavy cream for your dirty chai, it's going to be way too heavy and viscous. So I would suggest that uh, I, I tend to go with the almond milks. But if you are allergic to nuts, uh, Coconut milk, the kind in the carton, not the can, would be a very nice substitute. Uh, they're just a little bit lighter, even though they're very creamy, uh, more relative to the whole milk that would have been used in an original chai. Uh, I have my chai tea blend. It's the Assam tea. It has, I know you can't see the texture, but at least you can see some granules on my hand. And you can see that it's actually got a lot of pretty big sized pieces. And then the tea leaves in here are pretty robust too. I recommend uh, buying a loose leaf chai because it'll have a bit more robust flavor and a heavier spicing. Plus you can go through a lot of different chais in a tea shop where they can uh, waft the smells at you and uh, do the ones that uh, prefer that you prefer. I'm going to go ahead and pour this into my wire mesh, uh, my fine mesh strainer so that you don't get your fines in. And that just goes right in to the tea. I, since my, my almond milk is heated, it's uh, really quite warm. All you do is we pour part of it right into here. You're steeping it in. Some of the ground spices are going to hit that, and I put my cover, and we just let that steep. I have a little bit of almond milk left here, and I'm going to throw it right into the frother. I'll do more with the chat and say hellos in a second. Oh, I didn't say it very much for the frother. That's all right. I'm just going to heat that up and get it nice and fluffy for my topping. And that gets that going. So we'll just let that steep for a little bit. And you probably can't really see. It doesn't infuse a ton of color, but it does start going. Now, let's see. I see Air Fry and Auntie has joined us. And Gigi's here. Uh, lots of hellos back and forth. A Hungry Heath has joined us. Uh, let's see. Oh, and uh, Blue Duff says that after looking at the ingredients in the coconut milk in the carton, they can make that by using the uh, kind in the can and watering it down. Probably. Uh, I just, honestly, I think that the price differential, I just buy the kind in the uh, carton. So, because there was so little, it basically uh, covered that. We'll start it again just in a few minutes to top it off. But, uh... Let's see. Oh, and uh, Renee is here. She's cooking in the kitchen with uh, with GS. I don't know what GS is. Oh, the Geek Squad. Okay. Took me a minute. I'm slow this evening. So, let's see. 
Uh, oh, yeah, and uh, Reichlin is saying it's always good to prepare. Oh, Air Fry Annie says they made their first carnitas in the Instant Pot, and it was a comedy of errors, but ended up delicious. I am interested in hearing how that worked out in the Instant Pot, because when I have made carnitas traditionally in the past, I bring my pork, I cook it, but then I also do a lot of uh, uh, shallow frying. I was going to say deep frying, but deep frying is not right. You certainly can deep fry, but I, I shallow fry it so that it gets that super uh, crunchy, crispy. And I'm just going to agitate this a smidge to get the uh, tea flowing. Sort of like after it blooms, you want to give a, everything a little bit of a stir up. The other thing I have here is just a little bit of a topping. I have a cinnamon stick, a star anise pod, and two cardamom pods. Those, sometimes I would put them right into the tea, but I figured uh, I would be fancy and use them on the top, which means they're not going to add a ton to it. But they do add a lot of aroma. And they're actually even better in a uh, hot preparation. Oh, so I was telling you more things about the actual chai. Just so you know, like originally, even though this has the tea in it, chai didn't have any of that. So, oh, not the Geek Squad. Well, is what uh, Renee says. Well, okay, well, what is GS then? <laughs> it sounded good to me. I'm going to run with it. Anyways, uh, originally, chai was the uh, spice-infused uh, infusion of the milk, and it was sugar, uh, cardamom, black pepper, and ginger. I might have said that already. Sounds familiar. Uh, what happened is then later in adaptions, the Assam tea was incorporated into it. And then later, as uh, the chai started spreading and becoming more popular, uh, Western adoptions are what brought in these sweeter elements of the cinnamon and the star anise and uh, clove. So that's how we came to the more modern chai today. Uh, there's a lot of folklore around chai, so it's hard to tell what's true and what's not true. But a lot of uh, a lot of the historical references uh, say that chai developed in Siam was part of the royal court and especially the king and they don't even say which king they just like the king of siam sometime uh between uh, six and nine thousand years ago uh put this uh, uh spice infusion together as an ayurvedic uh, uh medical treatments which you know uh, probably doesn't really hold much in uh, in current modern life today but back then I'm sure the the spices and stuff made people feel nice and warm and uh, comfy. So, because it does that today. I've got a little bit of dust here on um, chai dust. So, that's basically a lot of the, the chai. Uh, chai didn't become popular in the United States until like the 1930s. And well, not even really in the United States then. And then it was already getting popular in... Uh, Britain, but the problem is that with Britain, like almost all of their tea was provided by China, and it was ex a, a very high end ingredient. So, about 1935, uh, Britain put tea plantations in uh, India, uh, especially in the Assam region, bringing in our black Assam tea. And part of that was to help break up the monopoly that China had on the tea. So that was pretty cool. It helped reduce the cost. And of course, uh, at that point then, it really helped India take off. And they developed the India Tea Company. And they basically did like a huge, heavy kind of campaign. Way heavier than usual for that time period. And hence that uh, helped brought, bring forward a lot of the popularity of the teas out of India. So there's your nerd facts on chai. My uh, dairy has gotten nice and uh, colored. So I am going to go ahead and pour it into my glass. I want to make sure that I have room for my espresso.
And then we will go ahead and let me just, we're going to whir this tiny bit of foam up for the top. We'll stick in my little cinnamon stick that's going to sink to the bottom instead of float. Throw in my two cardamom pods and my star anise for the top. my lovely spoon and just scoop on some of the foam not a ton of foam because my glass is pretty full but just enough get like a little bit of a texture on the top and there we go and this is my arachino so my Nespresso branded Arachino. It's excellent for this particular application. And there you go, iced dirty chai. Mm. All of the spices and stuff really uh, play well with the espresso. So it's super nice that way. I will also tell you though, it, you might want sweetener. I did not put any sweetener, but you definitely want um, if you're not a weirdo like me, you definitely want to add sweetener of your choice. You would actually probably add it to your uh, milk uh, spice infusion. Let's see what we've got here. Let me move my little power here. All right. Let's see. I have to dig in these messages here so I can find where I was at. Uh, coconut milk pot. Oh, oh Blue Dove says they saw that Autumn was asking me to pitch in on game time at Keto Palooza and has volunteered to help out as well. Oh, thanks, Blue Dove. That'll be really appreciated. I, uh, I'll start up a little bit of a chat on a Facebook instant message. So uh, may, uh, friend me up over there so we can do that and do our plotting. I'll talk a little bit about Keto Palooza shortly. So let's see. Uh, what else we got here? Oh, and uh, Jen is relaxing after doing the uh, the practice walk for with the, with the WAC family this morning. That's more Keto Palooza stuff. That'll be pretty awesome. Uh, Jen Delaney says there's a tea shop not far from downtown in Louisville that has a website, the Louisville Tea Shop. If anyone is coming for Keto Palooza, we'll definitely have to hit that up. Uh, let's see. And uh, Exchange Student 2 says they should be making some tea for kombucha, but eh, another day. I don't know. For me, there's tea many days. I, I love both tea and coffee. It's not an either or. Condensation on my wrapper here. Those were my spices. For a second, I couldn't remember why there was a little empty container. It's like, oh no, what did I forget this week? <laughs> but it's nothing. So, we're going to talk about Alfredo sauce. This is an American Alfredo. For, if you don't know, Alfredo sauce, uh, originally, as was, uh, it's actually Alburo, which is simply butter and Parmesan. And that was created in Rome by Chef, oh, I'm going to butcher his name. Well, not the Alfredo part. Uh, Alfredo Delalio. Anyways, uh, and he served that in his restaurant. Now, uh, eventually, and of course, now this is the made-up part that we don't know if it's true or not. In 1927, uh, some uh, black and white film actors, Mary Pickford and uh, Douglas Fairbanks, had the Alboro Alfredo sauce in Italy and came back to the United States and wanted to make that. Uh, that sauce, again, like I said, didn't have cream. Here in the United States, though, we have cream in it, the American version. And the reason that is, according to uh, a lot of uh, sources giving Italian-American history, and especially the uh, Italian-American cookbook by, uh, oh, I can't remember the first name, Last name's Mariani, but it's the Italian American cookbook. You can't miss it. Uh, the reason we add cream in the United States is because our Parmesan and our uh, butter 
is not as robust as, and as flavorful as the butter and the uh, Parmesan that they have in Italy. So it also bumps it up in richness. There's all kinds of things you can do. I have in my pan a tablespoon of butter. Let's heat it up. Now, this is super, super important. You want to warm things up, but not too much. It means it takes more time. But Alfredo is a sauce of taking your time. Also, don't make your Alfredo stuff with the craft cheese in the can. Buy yourself a wedge. I mean, obviously, if you can't afford it, you know, that's another story. But this is worth the indulgence. You can buy this little wedge. This is a Bel Gioioso Parmesan. It is an American Parmesan. And you can buy that. It was like uh, four fifty dollars at the grocery. And this is the tip of it that's left. I will tell you, use the rind in your Alfredo sauce. It's got a stronger flavor. And all I did was chip it off into little pieces, put it into my Nutribullet, and then grind it up. So it's still grated and it's Parmesan, but you want the regular Parmesan. That's all there is to it. You just want regular Parmesan and not the canned stuff. It doesn't taste right. Now, one thing we'll say, it does mean that you're more prone to break your sauce. We'll talk about that in a moment. I'm just melting this butter. The other thing with Alfredo is don't start with cold cream. Warm your cream up before you get started because that is one of the things that will cause your sauce to break. Everything needs to be warm already. So my cream is uh, room temperature, not hot. And before I get too far along, let me actually take the lid off my blender. Hopefully I actually ground it all and I don't have like a big hunk of rind in there, but even so. And it's equal, all your parts is, your butter is still only going to be like a tablespoon. I don't want it to get too burbly or brown. And it is. Let me go ahead and add in my cream. And you don't want to add any extra salt. Because your Parmesan is salty, your butter is salty, everything is salty. But you do want to whisk to emulsify. Now, let's see. And it will take a little bit of time to cook, of course. But if you start with, if you put, if you melt down butter, and then you put cold cream on it, then it is very definitely going to separate and initially like right now when I melted my butter definitely you can see the butter on the top you can't on the camera but already just with the whisking it's blending right in you also need to make sure your cheese sits out for a little while and is not refrigerated which Parmesan cheese doesn't have to be refrigerated so it's all good there so I ground it I ground it up uh, the rind, like I said, is, is not as pleasant to eat because of the texture, but because it has those nice salt crystals in it, it's fan-freaking-tastic in sauces as it melts down. And you just start incorporating your cheese. And wait for your sauce to thicken. You'll find all kinds of recipes that do all kinds of, oops, well, I guess I am not slowly incorporating my cheese. I'll grab it from the sides and just start bringing it in. It's easy peasy. But all we're doing is going to slowly whisk this cheese in. You guys knew some kind of craziness was going to happen here, right? I guess I should have stuck a fork in there and fluffed the cheese up a little bit. But it's already getting absolutely lovely and thickening and melting in just fine. No big whoop. And I didn't even splash it around all over my little burner here. You want things to heat up, but not to get over, uh, you don't want it to burble or boil. Just warm. You might get a little bit of burbling around the edge, and that's when you know you need to turn down your heat some more. And 
and we are just going to continue whisking and whisking and whisking until it gets to the texture you prefer. Let's see, what do we got here? Hunger Heath making jokes. Let's see. Oh, and uh, Pluto says they just watched the interview with RSK. I know I've missed a bunch here. Oh, and Blue Dove says they're having coffee in the morning with herbal tea before bed three days. That sounds nice. I actually don't... Sunday nights are my break-all-the-rules day. I eat later at night. I've been super thirsty today, so I'm having water with my iced chai latte. Mmm. So what you want is just like I said, you let this reduce. You go really slow so it stays nice and creamy. Uh, and I'm just about there. I have a little bit more cheese to blix in. And we're all set there. Where did I put my top? Oh, there it is. Anyways, here we go incorporate that last little bit then i have two final things to add here i have three cloves of roasted garlic i roasted it and i just then i just squeezed it out uh, a, a huge mistake that sometimes people make is that they use raw garlic and try to uh cook it up in front uh you know with the butter up top, you know, saute it and get it all nice and cooked. Uh, roasted garlic is going to be a, a, a friendlier mix-in to your Alfredo sauce. And it also, you don't want to saute it up front like that with the raw garlic because then you're going to overheat the butter. Then you're going to add, even if you use your warm cream, the butter's gotten too hot and that will cause the breaking of your sauce. So your roasted garlic will permeate lovely into your thickening sauce. I got it. Of course, you have to actually break it up. So let me whisk a little more vigorously here for a second. And we just let this uh, continue for a moment. It is getting nice. Let's see what we've got here. Let's see. The warden says on their TikTok, someone was talking about uh, the Waverly Sanatorium. I gotta get this Bluetooth out of my way. It's like sticking to stuff because I forgot to take it off. But the earbuds on it are magnetic, so you can just uh, put it back like a little necklace. Very handy. Now you also, you don't have to add garlic. That's my preference. That's not a thing you have to do with, Parm with uh, Al Parmesan Alfredo. Uh, you can also, at this point, this is when you would sprinkle in some parsley or basil if you wanted to herb it, uh, herb it up a little bit, or Italian seasoning, or whatever flavor profile you like. This is the stage to do it. So, anyways. Let me come around the edge here. And it's just about there because I just put my whisk through and I saw the bottom for a second. And so that means we, I am super close on this Alfredo sauce. And the warden is asking me if I think European butter and Italian parm would work without cream. And I do think it will. It won't be the same as this kind of Alfredo. It will still be a butter sauce, but it's divine. Butter sauce is amazing. I highly recommend your uh, cheese and butter sauce. It's great, but I really wanted the, I really wanted American Alfredo. I love how much we love dairy here in the United States. Everything, all the culture of food that we bring over to the United States, we add so much more dairy and cheese than all of the other countries do. And I just love it because it's just delightfully indulgent. And well, I mean, I love cheese and butter. You know what? I am 100%, you know, on board with that trend. Uh, I feel, you know, it's maybe a little, a little insensitive because I know a lot of people can't have dairy, but it does not bother me. So I enjoy it a great deal. 
and I love sharing it with other people. So here is my lovely Alfredo. Uh, you can also uh, sprinkle on some extra cheese at the, e at, the, at the end as a topping if you want, but I just usually don't. The final finish is your fresh ground black pepper. I am fairly generous. Uh, there are times when I've added chili flakes, but the, I just wanted your old school traditional Alfredo, uh, well, your traditional American Alfredo, uh, no frills, no fanciness, nothing special, because it's already, for me, special enough. Uh, and we'll talk some more about this here. Uh, my sauce did not break because I followed all my rules, but there are things you can do pretty much with every sauce if you have an issue. And tonight, I'm going to turn this off. There is our Alfredo sauce. So it's nice and creamy. If I had a noodle, it would coat and stick. I do not have noodles. What I have is uh, I smoked uh, chicken, and so I just cut some up, and I am having my Alfredo sauce on my chicken because that is plenty indulgent, and I probably should have brought a spoon to scoop this out, but we will get it with a spatula and enjoy all the Alfredo we want. But you'll notice I definitely made way more Alfredo than I am eating in this one sitting. And that might lead you to wonder about reheating Alfredo. Like in the past for pre-keto, you might have gone to like an olive garden or something and ordered uh, Alfredo and then you take it home because nobody can eat all of that. Uh, it's, it's just heavy upon heavy upon heavy. And you reheat it and then, but it's no longer delightful. It's broken and you've got big poodles of grease. And in case you're wondering, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but as you look through, yeah, you can sort of see, but it doesn't, it's thick enough when you can go and do a swipe and it doesn't immediately fill back in. So, but, Yes, yes, you can reheat Alfredo. And if I'm not careful, it will actually break just from sitting here too long. I wanna make sure as we continue talking that I occasionally reach over and give it a stir so that I can put it away. But when you reheat it, you're going to do it just like we did here. You're gonna put some of it in the pan and you're going to very, very, very slowly, slowly rewarm it as you whisk, 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 whisk. And if it starts to separate on you, you know, uh, uh, you want to get like some super hot boiling water. And you put just like a tablespoon in there and keep whisking. You might need to do up to like three tablespoons. So let's see what we've got here. Oh. That's really cool. Let's see. Let's see. I'm trying to catch up and not get lost in these. Let's see. Jen Delaney says they uh, found a documentary about Mary Pickford and they've been interested in her, but uh, uh, doesn't know much. HBO Max has a good document about a documentary about Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward. Ooh, I'll have to look that up. I have HBO Max, I believe, and so I would love to watch that. See. Oh, air fry auntie is if I'm say if I asked if I really said crap cheese in the craft can crap cheese in the can. I don't know if I did, but it's true. <laughs> Not that I'm above using it. It has its applications. There are times and place, but your Alfredo sauce. Go ahead, do it fancy. You you'll you'll never regret it. It will be the time for you to do your splurge and and go for it. The taste. Uh, differential is uh, n completely noticeable. Let's see. We've talked about those and see there was a location mentioned uh, but I don't know what it is because I can't find the comment but uh, oh 
the Waverly Santorium. Uh, okay, and supposedly it's one of the most haunted places. That's kind of interesting. You know, let's see the... So let's see, and the warden says the place sounds familiar. Supposedly TikTok's most haunted place in America. That's what I was just referencing. Gosh, everything just like, I don't know. Sometimes I don't know how you guys do these comments because it it's just all over the place. And then Blue Dove says uh, they were surprised that Heath clammed up at one particular question. <laughs> well, he'll be back. See, there he is now, asking Blue Dove what they mean. Let's see. Oh, more discussion about the uh, sanitarium. Uh, I'm back. What? Okay. YouTube must really want me to talk about European butter and Italian parmesan because that's the question I'm seeing for like the fifth time. What is with this thing today? Craziness. Anyways, Blue Dove says they need to make some butter today with some unpasteurized cream that's going off. They found a mess method for doing it in the Vitamix. Oh, yeah, the Vitamix will do that before. It'll spin that way right out of there. Um, that'll be awesome butter. Uh, you might take a look and see if the fact that it's going off, it might come out a slightly more cultured butter, but it will still be delightful. You might just have to uh, think about that when you're using it in your flavor profile. Uh, if you have any flake salt instead of ground salt, that might be uh, 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 an addition that you would want to use instead of the ground salt. Air Fried Annie says they would put a straw right into the Alfredo sauce. And uh, Air Fried Annie is asking, what's the name of the powdery Mexican cheese? Uh, powdery? I don't know about powdery Mexican cheese. If you mean the crumbly cheese, that would be the cotija. Or sometimes some queso frescos can be crumbled. Oh, uh, I don't know. The Oaxacan is usually more slightly more sliceable and creamy, more baskety. Let's see. And Blue Dove says they usually mix up the Alfredo and uh, pesto cold and then leave it to sit out and then dip their warm food into it. And that works great. Oh, that would be nice. Oh, Jen's asking if I've made a decision about my hair. That's because I posted on my Facebook that this shagginess was driving me batty. And it is. I posted a haircut with a lot of it mostly shaved and kind of like a little floof on top. And I believe this probably most likely, let's taste this, you guys. Now, why did I talk so long without eating this? Mm. Mm. Definitely worth it. And Blue Dove says they don't have flake, but they have the powdered redmonds. Oh, and Air Fryer Nanny says there's in a bag, so that's why they said powdery. Oh, well, that would do it, yeah. Because sometimes it does come up in that pre-crumbled version, and that's real nice. Because I'm lazy and and enjoy that. And two FXMJ says they were number eight to hit the thumbs up, so I appreciate that. Thank you, and that is a reminder to hit the thumbs up if you can. And Air Fryer Nanny says they've got a haircut and color tomorrow, so but no idea of what they want to do. Hmm. You know, I don't know. I really dig the purple. Do you like green? I don't know. If you do, uh, emerald green is like a super awesome hair color, and you have the right uh, skin texture, or not texture, the te the right skin coloring that that bright emerald green, not chartreuse. And not like olive green, like super bright. Uh, I was looking to see if I had something, but I don't. Or at least not within arm's reach. So that's my vote. If you, uh, if you like green. I love green, obviously. So it's probably always my vote. Uh, let's see. And, uh, oh, Jen says they have leftover chicken from the rotisserie they bought today. And they see chicken Alfredo in their lunch future. 100% I vote yes. Um, and Two Crazy Keto says they also love it when Air Fry Nanti's hair was the bright purple. 
It was really good. Oh, but they don't want to bleach again. Okay. You could go goth black. Is that like a crazy thing to do as grown-ups? I've had a lot of goth black hair in my past. Mm. Sorry to be rude and eat, but it's really, really good, and it's better right away. Let's see. The exchange student, too, says they buy the course Redmonds and then uh, Vitamix the rest of the way. Course for taking during fasting times. Ah, I have a nice bag of the big rocks. I love those, and I like to pack one in my cycling pocket. They are super handy. Oh, and they're afraid to look moldy for the 55th birthday this weekend. Yeah, the uh, emerald green is not the color if you're not wanting to bleach again because you would definitely have to bleach. I'm getting a lot of silvers in my hair, which you can't see on the camera. The camera hides all of that. But I'm getting a lot of silvers, and I love that they're all up front, which um, always makes me hopeful that I might get like a couple little shocks. That would be awesome. And every so often, I think maybe I should try and just go anime white with my hair. But then I realized it would grow out really fast. And it would be a constant pain in the ass to take care of my hair. And I am not the right person for that. I am not even good at uh, getting it cut on the regular. So, let's see. Oh, and Blue Dove says they did blue-black in high school, but they're so pale it made them look like a walking corpse if I if they didn't do their makeup. That was exactly what I was hoping for, to look like a pasty walking corpse. Oh, see? Now my high school me is jealous. So, and Two Crazy Keto says, goth black hair and matching nails and lipstick over here. That was the high school look for sure. Oh, see, we would have gotten on great back then. <laughs> Oh, oh Airfry Nanny says they're trying to get their hair to stop falling out again. Oh, honestly, you know, maybe not the most popular opinion then, but maybe don't color it right away. Oh, uh, why don't you get like a really hearty uh, cholesterol treatment on it? it? Sounds weird, but it's not cholesterol like people cholesterol. It's a heavy duty conditioner. And that might help uh, condition your scalp. Also, there are brushes you can get uh, that will I have a hiccups. Uh, but the brushes that will help stimulate your scalp. I would also recommend getting a nutrition lab panel to see if you are short any vitamins. Sometimes it might be that. You might need to up your fat or your protein. I don't know. It seems like you eat quite a lot of protein. So, but... It might need to up your fat. The other things that can cause that would be the um, uh, vitamin D. And with the way our weather has been, uh, vitamin D, especially because it also happens to people on keto periodically, but uh, vitamin D deficiency can also impact your hair. Also age, but, you know, I don't prefer, prefer to think about that at all. And the warden says if two crazy ketos brings back the goth look that uh, uh, she'll go with her. Yeah, I probably would too. Why not? You know, I'm not sure that it would really uh, be that big of a surprise to anybody if I went with my goth black hair again. Uh, Susan B., who is here, hey, good evening, Susan, uh, says they choose, they stay close to their natural color, but and their hair guy does a good job. Nice. Let's see. Oh, you know what you could do, Air Fry and Andy? What about like a really deep, rich auburn? If you really want to color it, you can get, because you can buy, um, yeah, ask your hairdresser, oh, what's it called? I can't remember. It starts with a J. Anyway, uh, Joico. If they use the Joico coloring, it is really enriching and has a lot of conditioner built into it. So that might help with your hair health as well. Oh, and Susan says in high school they were really hard on the hair because they were a swimmer year round. So, and it was the 80s, so perms were all the rage. Oh, yes, yeah, so many bad perms. <laughs> I had many of those as well. 
Uh, oh, and Air Fry Nanny says their hair person is really good. They've had a great conditioning glaze and that is not a color. So they may see what they can do. Uh, taking D3 and B, so they might, it might have been the bleaching. It probably was. Oh, and Two Crazy Keto says they got one perm and it looks like a Labradoodle. Yes, but you know what? That was the style back in the 80s. Uh, oh, anyway, so earlier, we're going to take a pause for one second. I got to eat another bite. Hmm. Mm. Spot on. So, anyways, a few things. More about the Alfredo. So I talked about reheating it, but I also talked about if your sauce breaks during your cooking. Like, I didn't ask for a better sauce tonight. Always when you don't want to screw up, things screw up. And when you actually want something to be a failure so you can show how to fix it, everything is hunky-dory. So today, like, man, this is like one of the better Alfredos I've made in a while. Usually, because I'm in too much of a hurry. But things that can cause your sauce to break is, of course, uh, too much heat. Uh, it's critical that you keep it low. But if you have your heat up too high, uh, the fats will emulsify. Adding uh, two different variable temperatures will cause it to break. Now, never fear. If it breaks or starts to curdle a little bit, remove it from the heat right away. Dump it into a blender that can handle hot foods or hot liquids. Uh, so, you know, your Vitamixes and your blend techs, uh, you know, or things that have a vent in the top. Never a bullet blender. Bullet blenders are not designed for hot liquids. They can get a vacuum and uh, explode. No, it's not guaranteed to happen every time. But when it does, it's real bad. So... In your bullet blenders, never ever put hot liquids. So, but you can throw that in the blender, start uh, start it blending, and then do that same tip I did talked about with the reheating. Put in a couple tablespoons of uh, super hot water, and that will re-emulsify it all and bring it back together. So you can rescue it. You never have to worry with your Alfredo sauce. You can save it. The good news is, is, even if it does break, it's still delicious. It's just not as pleasing texturally. It's not like some sauces where they curdle and then they taste bad. Hollandaise. But we can rescue hollandaise too. So we'll talk about that one, one week. Maybe we'll have to make another dish with hollandaise. Mm. All right, oh, and uh, let's see, more hellos, and Air Fry Nanny says, oh my gosh, the Tony perm with the plastic rods to produce the poodle-like cuts, curls, yes, the poodle curls, oh, yes, and then what I remember is in the, in the 90s, they brought that, uh, the spiral perm, which were supposed to be coils, but even with the special rods and stuff, it never looked as awesome as you wanted it to. And it would just be like super, super tight and curly. And it was just terrible. And yet we loved it. What were we thinking? So let's see. Hellos. Oh, and Air Fry Nanny says their head looked like a triangle. Yes, yes, because of the perm. And it would come straight out like this. And they never, they didn't cut and layer it and make it look nice and natural. It was just like spring, springs everywhere. So, you know, and of course in the 80s when you got those, it was easier so that you could make your hair even bigger and poofier. It could be so gigantic. Hilarious times. It was a lot of fun. And 2FX said that I'm like a sauce EMT. Uh, and Pluto says butter sauces are so great for bringing the fat. Yep. And like I said, everything is delicious and it is really easy. You just have to be mindful of being low and slow with it. That's all there is to it. That's the whole trick with your Alfredo sauce, low and slow. Uh, 
I forgot what I was saying. Oh, so yeah, I want to take a few minutes to talk about uh, upcoming uh, Keto Palooza in October. Uh, Airfry and Auntie, if you have the link to Keto Palooza, you could pop that in there. But a whole bunch of us will be there. It's a lot of fun times. I will tell you that uh, I did manage to catch Autumn's Live. I don't know what has been with me lately, but I can't seem to get on the right cadence for the live streams. And it's probably a combination of all my activities and work has been like, once again, ramped up and super intense. But I'd missed them for a while. And this morning we were talking about Keto Palooza. It's uh, end, of, end of September into October. It's in Louisville, Kentucky. And absolutely gorgeous downtown Louisville. Uh, I like to often talk about Columbus being a really nice looking city because it's also, you know, you're in a huge, enormous city, but it really doesn't feel, feel like it. It's got a nice homey sort of very uh, uh, friendly uh, Midwestern feel. Well, Louisville's like that too. Everything is really nice. It's not, uh, yes, there's a lot of skyscrapers and stuff, but you can totally walk around. You can breathe the air. It's not, it's, it, people aren't like massive rushing and hurrying everywhere. It's very uh, laid back. And right near downtown, they've got a gorgeous waterfront with a walking bridge, uh, lovely rented, rentable bicycles, and a lovely gorgeous bike trail so you can ride by the waterfront. So we do a lot of those kind of activities at Keto Palooza. But what's really important is that we also spend time fostering our community. Uh, we get to hear some industry speakers, but also the but like I said, the important thing is that we get to see a lot of people that we know already. Uh, and or that we talk to, especially a lot of the people who are on this live stream, Two Crazy Keto's live stream, Dr. Barry's live stream, and of course, on Autumn's live stream, the WAC family. So we spend a lot of time uh, uh, doing things like karaoke together. And this year, due to popular requests, we're going to have some uh, board games on Friday during the day during registration. Usually there's not a whole lot to do during registration and you kind of left to your own. We're going to bring some board games and set up in a room and uh, uh, everybody can play and we can chat and talk and have a good time. So we have a few volunteers. Jen has volunteered to help as, as has Blue Dove. I'm going to bring some fun and easy to learn games. So don't worry, none of my crazy, super hard, you know, this takes six hours to set up games. Nothing actually takes six hours to set up, but it feels like it sometimes. And I think that we'll have a really good time. The other thing that we're going to do at Keto Palooza is that Ready, Set, Keto, Hungry Heath, and uh, Radical Geek, along with a lot of our subscribers, are going to come to my room on Friday evening to do the Ready, Set, Keto tailgate live, and then immediately follow it with the Hungry Heath Friday Night Feast. We're going to do some fun stuff in the room. You know, we'll probably have some coffee, uh, a coffee station, and uh, earlier in the day, if you are interested in trying some cheese, we'll probably, on the last minute, of course, film a, trees fi a cheese Friday video. So if you want to do a little bit of tasting and maybe something a little different, Instead of just one feature cheese for Cheese Friday, we might do a nice little plate, uh, you know, a multi-tasting with a little uh, water in between to cleanse our palates. See what everyone thinks. I don't know. I haven't planned it all out. We'll figure it out. It's going to be surprise cheeses too because I found a creamery on my way into Louisville and I've arranged to stop in. I'll be meeting with one of the cheesemongers. We're going to pick out three to five cheeses to share with us at uh, Keto Palooza. So it's going to be pretty awesome. And I think for those of you who go to the Friday Night Feast, that'll be pretty cool too. Now, uh, Keto Chow is a sponsor of Keto Palooza. So they will be there vending, uh, probably not on Friday night, but they will be there uh, on, all through the whole convention. So if you enjoy Keto Chow, they will be there. Uh, make sure that you bring your funds to uh, get your show specials if they have some, or at least uh, restock. Uh, they will, there will be appetizers and karaoke on Friday night. And uh, in addition to that, on Saturday, we'll have uh, speakers, uh, some activities. Sunday night, we start our Sunday morning. 
we all get together and do some uh, physical activity and exercise. So many really cool things that we can do. Oh, and Jen says cheese is Heath's love language. I think cheese is my love language and coffee. Now, am I gonna? I did get asked several times if I was going to bring brew pots and do special brew coffee. And I'll tell you, I'm getting kind of lofty on the things that I can bring. And as much as I love coffee, I also, I don't mind that I might bring like a couple things just to fend for myself during the day. And I certainly don't mind sharing. But truthfully, for the Friday night feast, I'm actually uh, talking to one of the local coffee shops about just getting a bulk coffee, uh, coffee box and having that so that we can all just sort of relax. Hungry Heath says one of my favorite phrases, it ain't easy being cheesy. Oh, Chester, one of my favorites of all time. So, and so that, that's really the Keto Palooza thing. It's really a community fostering educational event, but uh, heavy on the social. So, and you know, you might want to know if you Google for Matreya and Board Game Geek, you can find my board game collection. I'll be honest, it's probably about 75% to 80%. And all I ever do is put the, uh, the board games that we own in our library. And I always say I'm going to go flesh it out. And I'll go in and I'll fill out like a number of plays and reviews and stuff for like three of them. And then I'm bored again. I'd rather play games rather than uh, uh, log them in a database. But you are always welcome to go through and look on that and see if there's something special you want. Or if you have heard of a board game and you want to make a special request, 50-50, we'll see. You never know what, uh, what kind of things might happen at a board game meetup hosted by Radical Geek and all of our awesome friends at Keto Palooza. Uh, you should know they are selling tickets for Keto Palooza and uh, I don't know. Oh. And Autumn has uh, let us know that uh, today there are still rooms available at the special rate, Thursday through Sunday. So if you go to that Keto Palooza page now and get your ticket and book your hotel room, uh, you'll get some discount going. And that will be pretty awesome. By the way, Two Crazy Ketos, who was here earlier, they will also be at Keto Palooza. So. You can see all your favorite people on your live streams, your favorite live stream people. I recognize that in real life, we also have other favorite people who may or may not be there. Mm. Sorry, I had to chew. That was too big of a bite. Uh, Renee says they made coastal ABTs and Mexican shrimp cocktail deviled eggs. They're going to fire up the Blackstone for some poblano cilantro lime marinated fajitas. Oh, that sounds great. Um, really awesome. Uh, I feel like there was one more thing I wanted to add. I don't remember what it was. It was there two seconds ago and now it's gone. Anyways. Oh, the other thing that's going to happen is during one of the mornings at Keto Palooza, uh, you might remember the uh, Caboodles, Karen and Brian. They're also uh, bike riding loving people. And as I stated, Louisville does have bikes you can rent. We are going to do a very easy peasy, uh, easy to follow. We're not going to race around or be all crazy. Just a nice little waterfront ride. And if you would like to join us on uh, Friday or Saturday morning, very early, uh, you know, that would be delightful. We can help you get to the rental bikes, uh, all that fun stuff. If you don't know how to ride at all, then yeah, probably not the greatest idea. But if you are an introductory rider, no worries. We can keep it where you can stay with us. It's what I would call a no drop ride, means no person gets left behind. Uh, we always have someone who can go and uh, it's also what I would call a slow roll ride. I like to call it party pace. It means that we go at a pace where everybody is comfortable and we have lots of frequent stops. We see sights and enjoy that kind of thing. So those are 
all of the fun stuff at Keto Palooza that we'll be working on. I also, you, you never know what might happen to, because I have also been plotting with our friends at Flatiron Pepper. So just keep aware of that on that Friday night. You might want to remember that. So that is everything I have for tonight. I need to take another big old drink of my dirty chai. And Air Fry and Auntie is asking if they have three wheelers. And I would say no. Rental bikes are almost always two wheelers, but they are uh, big fat tires, usually electric assist. I would have to double check the ones in Louisville. I don't know that for sure, but usually they are. So they would be very super easy. Uh, and I will look into it and get some more facts on that. Make sure everything is still good there. In the meantime, I do know that we've got some coffee requests. Um, I did order some white coffee. It shipped and then it got lost. And so I've written back and we are working on a new shipment. So white coffee will be on the horizon. And then Hungry Heath found a uh, chili coffee. And the chili coffee, I did immediately place an order. And now I'm talking to the to to them just a little bit to talk about some of their others because I ordered the Hatch Chili Blend. And then after I placed the order, I discovered that they have some extra crazy coffees. They've got a uh, Carolina Reaper coffee and my favorite, the Ghost Pepper coffee. So let's review them. Oh, and Master Gator is asking which I decided on. And to be, I can't even tell you right this second. I have to go look. It was a popular brand. They only had pre-ground, not the beans. And I can post it later. I don't want to dig into my Amazon right now. I did buy it off of Amazon. Uh, mostly because all of their reviews were good on their personal website. But I got a discount on Amazon. Shoot. I think they started with a P. It's gone. But uh, yeah. Looks pretty good. And Renee says they add cayenne to their coffee sometimes. So they think the coffee sounds tasty. Yeah, it could be very interesting. I'm looking forward to trying it out. Uh, was it the the willies it might have been i'm not 100 percent um i'm having some brain fog this evening uh part of that is due to uh uh tiredness i went to an anime convention yesterday i will say not only did i have to be uh enjoy the usual convention socialness but it was an anime convention which means i did a lot of networking because i run a department at an anime convention so you are also working as you talk to people about your convention. You help encourage people to go and sign up. You wheel and deal with vendors. You talk to other people in the same department as you. You meet with other people who work on the convention with you. And you are basically on from start to end. And there's no time. And on top of that, by the time I got home, I was super tired. And I looked at my little watch here and I had actually booked uh, 35,000 steps. So, boy, no wonder I was tired. And then I stayed up late, like a dummy. I had every opportunity to go to bed or on time, which as we all know is very important. And I didn't. I, I wasn't even doing anything. I was just like sitting there going, my, uh, my hip is tired and I'm tired and basically whining. So... Why did I not go to bed? I don't know. So now today I'm paying the price for that by not being as sharp as I maybe should. Oh, and Hungry He says roasty buds with the hats chili coffee. Yeah, we're talking about the white coffee though that I ordered. And I just, for the life of me, can't remember the name. Let me see if I can track it down. I don't know. It's kind of made... Oh, I don't have a keyboard right now. Never mind. Anyways, I'll pull it up and I'll share it later and let people know. Oh, two crazy ketos is saying they hope I can get some rest this week. And absolutely. In fact, we're probably going to be uh, finished up on this live stream. Unless anybody has any last minute questions or any requests. Because it is 7.30 and that'll give me time to finish my Alfredo, finish my dirty chai and do the dishes 
uh, and put everything away. So, but it was certainly my pleasure to see everybody tonight. And now, oh, I also get to go and do the replay on that two crazy ketos. That was pretty good. Oh, Jen's asking if I tried the keto cookie butter. Not yet. I didn't get rid of it or anything. I will eat it. Air Fry Annie says, not spicy coffee, too. Yeah. You know what? The hatch cream chili is probably not actually spicy. Yes, Poverty Bay. That's it. That's what I bought. The minute you typed it, I recognized it immediately. Poverty Bay is what I ordered. Good going. All right. Uh, so I hope you guys all have a great evening. I will talk to you tomorrow and or later in the week. Uh, don't forget, get your tickets to Keto Palooza. It's going to be freaking awesome. And let me know if you try the Alfredo sauce. Let me know other recipes you want to hear about or other special cheese requests you might have for Cheese Friday. And don't forget to hit the like button on your way out. Uh, if you're not subscribed and this is your first live stream, hit that subscribe button. And then hit the little bell icon so you're notified whenever I up upload or go live. All right, I'll talk to you all soon, guys. Thanks for a great evening. Bye-bye.